Hi, welcome to part six of my common filter uh, implementation for six degree of freedom IMUs. All right, now this is uh, part five and we're going to get into the, uh, the actual uh, development of the common filter and inserting it into the code. So hopefully you've had a chance to go back and look at uh, Jupe Brookings MPU 6050 uh, code. Uh, what you're seeing on the screen here is, is my version. And I have taken uh, Jupe's version, uh, I've added the comb filter, and then I also split the program up into tabs. So this makes it very easy. You can page through the tabs here. Makes it very easy to, to go through the code and, and talk about it. So I'm gonna, tab by tab, I'm gonna step through and show you what you need to do to get the comb filter running on the Arduino in uh, Jupe's code. All right, so the first part here is the initialization. Uh, everything is pretty much the same. One thing I did change though is Jupe had uh, two gains for his complementary filter. I made those uh, variables so that I could easily change them. Uh, let's see, now the next thing is we get into uh, the common filter and I have some comments here that explain uh, the different uh, variables that we need to, to add. And it's the, uh, you can see the state variables up here. These are the state variables, the uh, covariance variables, uh, the measurement matrix, um, R, S, and the inputs, and the two gains. Um, an, interesting, an interesting note I need to make you aware of is that in MATLAB, uh, arrays start indexing at one. So the first element of an array is, the, is one. In uh, C and in Arduino code, the first element is zero. So um, a two element array will have element zero and element one in, uh, in um, Arduino and C code. So, if, uh, so what I've done to keep the numbers this consistent between MATLAB and here is I've, I have the zero element in here, but I've, I've just got it, uh, I'm not using it. So in other words, if we look at, at, one, of the, at one of the state vectors here, the, the role state, uh, notice there are three elements. I'm not going to use this first element, the zeroth element uh, of the array. And I'm just going to, so my, the two I'm going to be, you'll be seeing are element one and element two. So that'll keep the indexing the same between MATLAB and here. It's a little trick you can do. Of course, you can uh, save some memory space by, by re-indexing everything starting at zero, but I like to start at one, uh, especially when I'm showing a demo. So here's, the, here's all the different um, uh, variables that you need. And uh, what we're gonna be setting up is a common filter for estimating roll and, a, and another common filter, a separate one for estimating pitch. Uh, we won't need it for yaw uh, because we really won't be uh, tracking yaw accurately in a six stop because you don't have a magnetometer to get compass angle anyway. So you just go ahead and let that drift. But we don't want pitch and roll to drift. So we're going to use either a complementary or a common filter to do that. So we'll, we'll add in pretty much the same variables that we had in MATLAB. It is the same variables, although I now have both a pitch and a roll set of variables. Um, so those are, those are all the variables we add. Um, you'll also see later that I'm outputting uh, some values. Mainly I want to output... Uh, uh, pitch roll and yaw to uh, to the serial port, so I have some uh, parameters that I've I've added so that I can do that. But I'll get to that in a minute. All right, let's look at the setup routine setup portion, and let me page through and see what I've changed here. I don't really think I've changed. Yeah, nothing changes in this one, this section. Okay, the main loop. In the main loop, there are some things that are a little bit different in here. Uh, mainly, if you go down here. Uh, you can see here is the uh, complementary filter where I've, instead of using uh, Jupe's fixed gains, I've added uh, variable gains so I can mess around with those at some time. I also, um, you'll see here that I also initialize the acceleration and, and roll and pitch calibration to some initial values um, that are calculated up here. And then, let's see, and then uh, just like in the regular program, it calculates the pitch and roll. And uh, 
For display purposes, Jupe was also adding a second complement filter that you don't really need, but it's he, uh, it looks like he was trying to get some further smooth rolling pitch. And so I've included that in here, but I really don't use it. Here's the important part here. Uh, these are the, the two lines that call the common uh, filter roll algorithm and the common filter pitch algorithm. Uh, so it, it calls them with those two lines of code. And that is it. So in other words, these are the main two lines that you need in the, in the main loop routine. Okay, function calls. Uh, there are two function calls. I didn't change either one of them. They're just like what uh, Jupe has. You need to be able to uh, set up the IMU and you need to be able to read from the IMU. And these uh, two function calls do that. Uh, data output. I, uh, you'll be seeing in video six, I, I stream out a series of, of uh, variables to the serial port, port and then I plot them in real time. And this is the way I do that. I, I, set, up, I set up a number of variables here, uh, pitch, roll, yaw, and, uh, and then I, uh, those, those are just setting up the variables. Uh, to get the, the text values, I actually do a string to, to uh, a uh, value to, to string conversion here. And then what that allows me to do by doing it this way, instead of printing everything one by one using the serial print command, if I pack it all into a text array, I can just serial print it in one, in one quick line. It prints a little quicker when you're trying to run in real time, I've found anyway. So that's a, this is kind of a trick for doing that. So I'm going to be printing out to the serial port. I'm going to print out um, the complementary filter, roll, pitch, yaw, and the, uh, and the common filter, roll, and pitch. And we can, we'll be able to compare those. So finally, let's get to the, the common filter routine. This is pretty much a cut and paste from the MATLAB code that we had earlier. And by me not using the zeroth element of the array in, in the Arduino code, it allows me to just uh, use the pretty much the same MATLAB code there. So I think if I step through this, you'll see it's pretty much cut and paste. I'll leave it up on the screen in case you wanna take a screenshot of it to, to compare, but it's, uh, but this is how I calculate the roll angle here. And I've, just like I did in the MATLAB code, I've included the matrix code, but notice everything's in scalar form here. And then if I go on down here, I think, oh yeah, in the, uh, the one thing that's different about the MATLAB code is that um, you need to add back in a correction for the yaw movement. So when you have some yaw movement, you need to correctly uh, uh, add back in the effects that that yaw movement will have on roll and pitch. And so you have to add in this line of code. That's the only thing I've added that's different, I believe. Okay, and then uh, like the roll, you need to do the same thing for the pitch. So have, a, have that same copy of that same uh, function call, but, do, but uh, switch in the pitch variables. I'll leave these up a second in case you want to uh, do kind of some kind of screen copy just to double check yourself when you cut and paste it in. And then here's the bottom half. But pretty much exactly like the MATLAB code, except for that, again, for that one line of code up here where you, you have to correct pitch also for the yaw movement. So make sure you add that back in. Otherwise, it's a cut and paste. You can, so you can see that if you already did the code in, in MATLAB, uh, with some pretty minor changes, you can cut and paste that in here and, and get it up and running. So that's a summary of the of the code. I'll go back here to the variables and leave these up here for a second in case you want to uh, take a look at those again. And take a screenshot of that. Make sure you get these all these variables uh, input in for the common filter. But that should be it. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll go on to video number six now, where what I'll do is I'm going to call up um, a real-time plot of the common filter and the complementary filter running together, and we'll just talk about uh, talk through some various things uh, like the effects of gain and the gain values and, and such on there. All right, that's, that's it for uh, lesson five. Thanks for watching.